Hi everyone, welcome back to my next video. Now today we're going to show you a no build build and I think this is going to be one of the most important videos I ever make. If you have no money to spend, you can buy an amazingly good minivan for $3,000. Uh, Homes on Wheels Alliance, how on, uh, buys them, searches for them and buys them all the time and we just have had tremendous luck finding them. Uh, you know, 100,000 miles or less uh, a 2000 and later, uh, I believe uh, the one we have now is a 2003. Uh, we paid uh, 3000 for it and it's got less than 100,000 miles. So we get mechanics to check them out. They're in great shape. 3000 will buy you a really nice, good quality, trouble free minivan. But a lot of people worry, well, won't it cost me thousands to build it out? Where am I going to get that money? And I don't have the skill. I'll have to find someone. and. I don't know anyone that can do it, and I, so I can't. I just can't live your life because I can't do the build. You don't have to. That's the good news. You don't have to do the build. It can be really, really simple. So this is a no-build build, a comfortable, pleasant life with no skills, no minimal carpentry. I can't say none, but minimal carpentry. So let me show you what we're doing. We bought a cot. The most important thing is a cot. You'll be comfortable. You'll be off the floor, and you'll have storage. You get all those things, and we'll, we'll put leaks into this and other cots that will work in here. But we have a problem. The floor on almost every minivan I've ever looked at is a convoluted mess. I mean, it's just a convoluted mess. One answer is to take everything out and put down plywood, but then you're building, aren't you? You're really building, because you got to cut correctly to around all the curves. And, and even then, it won't be completely level. We have a better plan that's so simple that we think anyone can do it. If you buy this cot, or one very similar to it, uh, you'll see that it's not in line, it's not parallel with this, because the floor is very uneven. So if I raise this to make it level, so that's about level, I would probably just I'd get a tape measure and measure down and say this is level. And then if you'll look at this leg, uh, once I've got it level, the distance from here, this this crossbar to here, we'll measure that and we'll cut a piece of PVC pipe that's the right length to go from here and keep this level. Right? You got that? It's really simple. This is an inch and a half, so I bought a piece of pipe, a PVC pipe, Schedule 40. It was six dollars and it will do this and we'll have a whole bunch left over. Um, and you cut it from the distance from here to the floor once it's level and let's say that's eight inches uh, because they're all going to be different the, and your, your van will be different the bed will be different then you cut this one to six inches then you just slide it under and we'll show you we're going to do all this for you and then you come over here holding it up there you measure this distance and you cut it you say well I don't have a saw oh, that's way too hard I can't cut that we're going to use a uh, <laughs> The cheapest, worst saw you've ever seen. You really honestly can do this. You can go to uh, Walmart. We're going to use a hacksaw. You can use a hacksaw on almost everything. And you can go to Walmart and buy a cheap hacksaw on a blade for two, three, four bucks. I mean, they're just cheap. It's cheap Chinese stuff. You only need it once, and you can keep it and use it a lot of times. Or you can buy a cheap uh, wood saw. That's actually better and more useful, I think. Although a hacksaw is pretty darn useful. So. We'll get this cut and leveled, and then we're going to build out the rest of the van. Really simple. No carpentry. This is all the carpentry going to be required. Now, an option, we can put that down. Thank you, Elisa. Uh, an option would be to cut the legs to the right length. And if you have a half hacksaw, which we do, uh, you could do that, but it's going to be a lot harder than cutting a piece of PVC. If you've ever cut PVC, it's a lot easier to cut that and get it reasonably good and cut all these metal legs. That would be really hard. Uh, we're not going to do that. So next we will show you cutting the PVC, the measuring, the cutting, and we'll go from there. So let's do that next. So I'm going to have uh, Dwayne and Doug uh, demonstrate this for you and uh, show you how this is done. Go ahead and do it guys. Thanks. All right. Okay. The first thing we're going to do is hold it up level. Let's drop a little right about there. Okay. Measure the distance from the floor to the crossbar of the bed. It's eight and three quarter. Make sure it's close to the same on the other side. 
looks similar, eight and three quarters. Then the next thing we're going to do is cut the PVC to that length. Mark it at your measured distance, eight and three quarter. Probably the two critical things are getting an accurate measurement and trying to make a square cut. If you make a crooked cut, PVC is cheap. Try it again. Second step will be to take measurements from the crossbar to the center legs. Here we've got seven and three quarter and this side for whatever reason is uh, only seven and a quarter. So that's the size we're going to cut so that all six legs uh, rest evenly. So seven three quarter and seven and one quarter. Alright, this one's at seven and one quarter. See how that works. Set down. We have it stable and weight on all six legs and uh, pretty level. And it's done. Six minutes. That's six it. Six minutes. <laughs> so we've got the bed, and that's the most important thing. You got to have a bed. We'll have links to below. We did this simple thing with these tubes. Just works great. Uh, just a brilliant little system. It's a little wobbly, but I think it'll stabilize itself with some weight on it. Also, you have to be very careful that you don't hit your head. That's a big, big thing. If you sit on your bed and you hit your head all the time, that gets really old fast. So you might want to very seriously thinking about an option, because we raised the bed to make it level, is to lower the two back legs, or every minivan's different. Usually, is you have to lower the two back legs, but not always. And then you'd have to probably cut six of them with a hacksaw, just like we cut the, the pipe. It's just metal, so it'll be harder. And that will lower the bed. The big advantage to a, a higher bed, other than the big disadvantage of hitting your head, is that uh, you get more room, more storage underneath. Okay, so where the bed is set, now I'm going to build, put in a whole bunch of storage, just cheap plastic drawers it, it won't overload your uh, weight the weight won't overload the minivan it'll give you great practical um, organization and storage and it's cheap I mean all these things are like 10 between 10 and 20 dollars each so a whole bunch of them and you may you may spend a couple hundred bucks on the entire build that way and, and light and cheap and easy and you're on you're going so I'm going to throw all that stuff in, and then we'll come back, and I'll show you an example of how you might could do it. Okay, let's do that now. And so you can see here that we've just uh, uh, arranged a bunch of plastic drawers and things. So this one we've opened to the outside. You can open it from here. Uh, and we didn't want to lose this. The, the bed is fairly deep, so we put storage here. You, if you had a battery, you could put a battery here. If not, I'll show you a tote. We have totes that would just fit right inside there. You just, 
you know, you stuff every corner. And here's the big problem that people have all the time, and I hear about this all the time. They go out in their rig, they throw it all in, and then they're, and they have way too much. That's the first thing you have to do is get way, way down on how much stuff you own. But then they just throw it all in, and so they, they, they can't find anything because it's all just piled in. And so it's, they move the pile to here to find that, and then they want this thing, so they have to pile it back. And it, it, that is the most miserable life you can have. You must avoid that if you possibly can. And so just drawers, and, and very quickly, you'll start to realize this is office supplies. All my office supplies are here. Um, all my, um, my toiletries, I wouldn't put toiletries here. Tools, I'd put a bin here with tools that you don't need to get very often. Uh, so you would come back around here and get your tools, things you don't need often. You just think it all through and you'd make good organization out of nothing. I mean, this is like five bucks, seven bucks at Walmart. And these, I think, are maybe they're 10, 12, I don't know. It's been a while since I priced them. But let's go around and I'll show you some more. So here, I've got an exact matching drawer and you open it to the inside. So the things you need often, you get here. And these don't have any real inclination to roll out. It can't go forward. It's up tight against the. Um, it's up against the seat. This wedges it. It can't. That's really not going to move anywhere. And it, well, the big forces are breaking, and that's the problem. Uh, I'll, and if you'll stick the camera in your Brad, you'll see I've got a, a drawer unit in between. Now that problem with that is I'm blocking you from getting in the back, and you may not want that. I'm just showing it to you as an example of how you could really maximize your space. I mean, that thing must be about eight inches. Whatever size your minivan is, all, this, all the dimensions will be different for every minivan, different years of minivans. Um, you can find something that fits in there. And if you may not want to do that and block that, you could pull that out. And I also just stuck this water in here. You gotta have water. You want pretty easy access. That's a perfect jug for right there. And then these are something I really highly recommend soft totes because they can go anywhere uh, they're not going to go flying around uh, different size totes this is still enough room for the entrance here's an odd space so you find an odd bag for an odd space and as this fills up it expands and as you use it it gets smaller so you know you just there's a little cubby you stick something in there and these pla and these soft soft items are what are easy and they're tall they're skinny that's just organized you know exactly what's in here this belongs to lisa the who we're building this van for when we build it the no build build and this is her entire kitchen she knows it's in here she knows exactly where it is she's not shuffling everything around to find it all the time kitchen's here maybe tools are in there uh Underclothes are in there. You know, however you organize your life, you can do it. And you won't be doing that shuffling everything around all the time. Okay, and here is something that I would really recommend. These are just individual drawers. You know, you know you've seen these at Walmart or, or Target. Target has a good selection. And so you get a couple of these. Let's say we put this over here and make better use of space. And uh, so you put that there. You put this here, and you know, you know what, everything that like this and this, and you can just reach them, uh, and I, you know, you can easily get four of these, and then you'd have to put something in the back or something long, but I'm not, you know, every van, every floor, every length, it's all going to be different. These are just ideas of a no-build build. You can do this for almost no money and no effort, and I just really want you to be aware of how easy this is. And okay, let's go now to the back. Just to give you another example of storage, so you could use, uh, these are long, and uh, so you can see you're using that entire space, and yet this is tremendously organized. You can know exactly what's in it. You are going to have to slide it in and out every time, and that's not the best, but hey, it's better than being frustrated and angry because you can't ever find anything. And so two of these, think about all the storage that this is in these two items. And again, uh, I could push them all the way back and put something like this in here. So now that is all that space is completely used up and really nice.
Um, so that's just really brilliant. And then uh, I would put things here because you don't really, unless you, but if you put these here, then you can move them easily and have walk through if you want. I would probably, they're not, see how unlevel the floor is. That's a problem with all the minivans. Um, and then you need a kitchen. And here's what I would do is I would put the kitchen back here. This is brand new. We're giving this to one of the recipients. So this is one of the uh, butane stoves. You've seen these before. And uh, I believe this is one we try always, yeah. This is one that will use both the butane bottles and the propane bottles. So uh, I would cook here. I would keep all of my um, kitchen items in these two bins so that anytime I knew where everything for the kitchen was here or here, my pots, my pans, my food maybe I'd keep in here and all my pots and pans and utensils I'd keep here. And then uh, I would um, keep the stove. And this is, the great thing about these stoves is you can leave it out and throw this away, but that's up to you. That's your choice. Or uh, keep it in the box, fold it up, and keep it right in here. So your kitchen's gone. I can stand back here and cook, or I can sit on the bed and cook. I can cook inside or out, depending on the weather. Uh, I just, uh, that's that's something I, I like, that option. And again, you got a little little nook here. So you just look for every, uh, every nook and cranny and you find a tote of some kind that would go in there. But it's organized. You know this would be more kitchen stuff since you're cooking here. Thing is it to reproduce this because you probably have a bunch of plastic uh, totes in your home right now. Make use of them. You'll find a place for them in a, in a minivan. And use all the kitchen utensils, use your bedding. The bottom line is here, it took no carpentry skills. We had to cut the legs to make the height adjustment. That's the only even slight skill that was required. And it, believe me, it's within the capacity of anyone to do this. You can go to Walmart and buy a cheap hacksaw for five, 10 bucks at the most. And you can do that and adjust the legs on this cot. The total cost of everything in here, $300 or less, I'm certain. Uh, I'd have to, to total it up. You probably have some of it at home. I mean, you probably have this at home. Uh, who doesn't carry this kind of stuff at home? And water jugs, and just use one gallon bottles. You can find a place to stow one gallon bottles and find something like this to put on top of it so you don't waste the sta sta space above it. So uh, get rid of everything you possibly can and then uh, find soft things and plastic things and you've got a great, comfortable home. I just think that's so very, very, very valuable. I'm going to do a, uh, a companion video to this, a part two, of super cheap and super easy solar. Because that's the next question I get. I, how am I going to have power in there, Bob? Sure. Okay, great. Thank you so much for showing me this. But i got to have power, too, and I don't know how to put on a solar system. Now, what's MPPT and what's watts and volts and amps? I, can't, I just can't get it. Believe me, I understand. I've spent years learning amps, volts, and MPPT. It was not a pleasant experience, but I had to, so I did. Uh, I'm going to make it really super simple. So watch that video coming up next. Thanks so much for watching this. I just hope this is as life-changing as I mean it to be. Three grand for a good minivan, three, four hundred bucks for the entire build, a couple hundred bucks for the entire solar, and I'm going to show you how to do that. Uh, and you have a great life on an absolute minimum amount of money. So um, I just hope this is as life-changing as I mean it to be. So thanks for watching. I really appreciate that you, that you watch. Uh, hit that thumbs up button, subscribe, please. That's how we get the money to pay for all we're doing, that Homes on Wheels Alliance is doing. So please subscribe, and uh, we'll talk to you later.